Hi everyone, welcome to Professional Layers. Today we will be talking about 15 minutes 15 current affairs series from 14th March to 17th March. So please pause the video and see that you are done with these topics or not. If you are not done with it, so stay with me. This is going to be a very productive session for you. Along with that, if you are aware of these particular topics, so you can skip the video and do your preparation. So that's how your strategy should be. Okay. Now, every time whenever I come with 15 minutes, 15 current events, I will generally give what one liners are also. One liners are about 5 to 7 per video, which is very huge at the time of examination. So, make sure that one liners you can write in the notebooks and that is going to be a current affairs all by themselves also. Okay. So, let us start our discussion for admissions with regard to UPSC, PSIR, and TSPSC and group 1, group 2. If the number is given in the description, you can call and connect with the help of a demo. You can understand that what is your future strategy and how we are going to perceive. And how you are going to crack the examination. Okay. Chalo. How are two new election commissioners are appointed? Uh, obviously, two one election commissioner has is resigned very much before, and recently we have seen that one election commissioner has resigned. So basically, election commission is a multi-member body at this point of time. One chief election commissioner will be there, one chief election commissioner, and he should be assisted by two election commissioner. These two are these two uh, have resigned and this, the, uh, the position is vacant. So, the President of India, according to the Constitution, has appointed two election commissioner, Gyan Kumar, Gyanesh Kumar and Subbir Singh Sandhu. Okay. These are the first election commissioners who have been appointed uh, by the new law. The new law for the election of uh, chief election commissioner and election commissioners are made by amending the Constitution and the law is called as Election Commissioner Appointment Condition of Service Terms of Office Act 2023. So, this is a new law according to which the appointment conditions of service and terms of office of chief election commissioner and election commissioner are fixed. Okay, remember this point the older version of appointment of CECs and ECs are nothing but a prime minister and a leader of opposition was there along with that leader of opposition party along with the chief justice of India. Okay, this was the previous way of electing uh, chief election commissioners and election commissioner. Now, this has been changed. Okay, with this new law, the three member body consists of Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, Union Home Minister Amit Shah, and also a leader of uh, Indian National Congress in the Lok Sabha, Adi Ranjan Chaudhary. These three people have selected these two particular persons. Okay, so whatever is there in the current affair, that only I am talking about background, foreground, etc. I am not giving you because my intention is very simple. The what is current affair that should be uh, given to you. That is all my intention here. The conceptual thing, all that static is unnecessarily burdening to the student itself. And more of time, more of time, if you are spending a lot of time on the current affairs, you will also lose interest. That's why 50, 50, 70, 70 pages of current affairs, okay, weekly or monthly is not going to serve the purpose of the student because they are not going to finish it off it. So my idea is very simple that what is there in the current affair, what is there in the newspaper, I am just writing that only so that at least you will get to know that uh, when you start preparing the uh, from my notes or from my lectures, you know that these are my number of current affairs I have completed. It boosts your confidence and definitely everything I am anyhow covering it. So that is going to help you out in the examination. Number of Indians who gave up membership. According to the government data, large number of Indians have given their uh, citizenship and most of them migrated to what? United States. Almost around 78,284 people went to United States, followed by Australia. Uh, USA is the best destination for the Indians. Okay, when they leave there, uh, when they give up their citizenship, then they'll go to what Australia, then they'll go to Canada and UK. India does not have the double uh, uh, citizenship related feature with regard to our constitution. Uh, as a Indian, you have to enjoy only one citizenship. That is Indian citizenship. If you want to become any other citizen of any country, then you have to relinquish or you have to give away what Indian citizenship. So all of these people have given up Indian citizenship and they thought that their permanent uh, settlement in, in that country is more better. Okay, the number of Indians uh, who has given their citizenship in 2019 were around 1.5 lakh. Okay, in uh, 2020, 85,000 and 2021, 1 lakh 63. So, a lot of Indians are actually moving out. You can see that within three years, almost 4 lakh of the Indians has given their um, uh, citizenship. So, it is again a debatable. Now, when India is growing so much, why people are going, right? Yes. Now, Chabar port, let us see that it is in Iran. You can see that this is uh, here from you will see this is our India. This is right. This is Pakistan. This area is Pakistan and we all, this is Iran. Right. This is Oman. Okay. Which is a part of what Gulf country. 
so between iran and oman you are having gulf of oman and near the gulf of at the end of the gulf of or you can say the opening of the gulf of oman only the gwadar port is there sorry the chabahar port is there chabahar port is there here exactly at the mouth chabahar port it is in iran remember this point so just beside uh, uh, chabahar port we are having gwadar remember this point gwadar port is pakistan gwadar port is pakistan gwadar port is pakistan chabahar port iran chabahar port iran chabahar port iran and this particular port okay we are this is a chabahar is is a project we are we are building actually they are building two ports there chabahar is a project two ports are being built in this particular area of what iran and india anyhow gadar port we cannot take the use of gadar port in order to connect to europe or middle eastern countries uh, why because pakistan is our hostile nation so we want to have the connection with chabahar port and from there we want to go with caspian sea and we can take the market of what this particular afghanistan and russia we can go here so that's why if the chabahar port is uh, having we are having little bit of investment and uh, uh, what influence to use the chabahar port we can properly capture the market of what russia russian uh, whatever the and central asian countries so that's why chabahar port as i have told you that it is situated at the mouth of the gulf of oman that we have seen it is iran first deep water port this also you have to know as a gk the port is also important why because international north south transport corridor a multimodal transportation project linking indian ocean our ocean okay linking indian ocean okay and our this uh, um, gulf persian gulf then here we are having caspian sea and going toward going to what northern europe and also what st petersburg in russia so we are having what two connections here so as i have told you that chabahar project is in chabahar project two ports we are um, they are constructing one is shahid behesti and shahid kalantari two ports are there under chabahar project so india is investing in shahid behesti remember this point very important okay social advise audit advisory body saab social advi audit advisory body is nothing but social societal members societal experts will be taken in order to conduct audit with regard to what government programs and government policies okay so social audit advisory body conducted its first meeting conducted its first meeting in the conference hall of dr ambedkar international center in new delhi the secretary of department of social justice and empowerment chaired the meeting very important who chairs the meeting of social audit advisory body it is chaired by secretary of social justice and empowerment this point you have to remember this advisory body includes lot of representatives from key ministries and academic institutions such as ministry of health ministry of uh, person with disabilities ministry of women etc so and so forth okay it was designed to assist the ministry in instituting social audit for its programs so basically whatever the government schemes and programs and missions are there how they are working how much money has been actually allocated whether the money allocated has been properly spent or not whether that goal of that particular program or the scheme has been achieved with the particular uh, expenditure or not that is only called as what social auditing wasteful expenditure that we have done or not or it is a qualitative expenditure or not so for that purpose all the ministries key ministries are being a part of this particular audit along with that academia is also there the experts are also there that's why you can understand that it is going to be a very transparent auditing of what government programs okay the department of social justice and empowerment has taken a pioneering step by establishing national resource cell for social audit which will ensure social audits through specialized social audit units at the state level at the state level also with regard to state programs and scheme a separate branches or units will be open which will be also serving as social audit at the state level then ladakh is demanding lot uh, there in its insertion in sixth schedule you might be aware of this okay right ladakh is demanding yeah it's inclusion in sixth schedule lot of people you just type the uh, type on the youtube that uh, the ladakh protest you will get okay the sixth schedule under article 244 provides for the formation of autonomous administrative divisions means ad autonomous district councils okay that have some legislative they can make law judiciary they can make rules and regulations to the court and also what administrative autonomy how they want to govern their state how they want to govern their area it ultimately the powers rest with this particular council nothing but when our central government make any law with regard to legislative with regard to judiciary administrative autonomy administrative rules and regulations these councils can override that override in the sense is that even in central government asked to implement so and so things with regard to legislative things or judiciary they may say that no 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 we don't require it that is also fine that's why they are called as what that's why 
they are very powerful okay the six schedule at this point of time are applied to northeastern states of assam meghalaya mizoram and tripura so remember this point this is not there to arunachal pradesh this is not there to nagaland this is not there to manipur these three are excluded from the six schedule if the if the if there are different scheduled tribes in an autonomous district the governor may by public notification divide the areas or uh, inhabited by them into autonomous regions if a particular area is having two three tribes so governor with the notification can divide that uh, two three areas okay and can give again auto autonomous councils for the different different areas also governor by public notification include any area in any of the parts exclude any any area from any of the parts create new autonomous districts okay and governor has the power to increase the area of any autonomous district diminish the area of autonomous district Un unite two or more autonomous districts or parts there so so as to form one big autonomous district alter the name of any autonomous district define the boundaries of autonomous district so you can understand everything with regard to that particular autonomous uh, district okay with regard to area related and tribe related governor is only the sole authority to change to make changes with regard to giving a tribe a new area a new council or diminishing area 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 tribe tribe is only the powers okay then covid committee covid committee our former uh, president uh, mr covid so after his uh, uh, term is over we got uh, uh, murmuji so the government of india has appointed him to give a suggestion with regard to can we have one nation one election can we have one nation one election and the report has come they, they said that one nation one election is good and we should go for simul, um, simultaneous elections and parallel elections both in lok sabha and states the cons but to do this the constitution should be amended to enable simultaneous election okay in the first steps simultaneous elections will be held to lok sabha and state assembly for this particular step government central government need not to go for what ratification is not required means state also should pass the uh, what uh, this particular bill that is not required as in the case of gst in gst cannot be implemented until at least may okay lok sabha rajya sabha should pass it along with 14 states should also say yes for the gst then only gst came into being but for this one nation one election with regard to conducting election for lok sabha and state assemblies we don't require ratification means the party in power if he is having majority can pass in lok sabha rajya sabha and can give the country a one nation one election but in the second step if the election to the municipalities and panchayats will be synchronized with the elections to lok sabha and rajya sabha okay if uh, lok sabha elections assembly elections panchayat and municipality elections if all these three elections should be conducted at one time then for this purpose okay ratification of states are important two third of the majority plus 14 states minimum uh, two third of the states should say yes for that uh, simultaneous election okay and uh, it has told that uh, once lok sabha and state assembly elections are over within 100 days okay local body elections should also be over okay now with regard to they said that there should be a single electoral roll means i should be registered and get what only one election id card suppose what may happen that just uh, in maharashtra you know that there was a shiv sena uh, shiv sena and national congress party and inc all of them were actually uh, what ruling the maharashtra then what happened uh, some of them uh, went into what Eknak Ek Shinde camp and uh, sided with what BJP etc. This happened. So when this happened and uh, suppose the assembly uh, may not have majority. Right now there was a majority that's why they are ruling. The same thing happened with Bihar also. Okay. Uh, there also uh, the Nitish Kumar with uh, um, Tejasvi Yadav. These two are there. Now Nitish Kumar went with BJP. Let us suppose in, in this uh, when a, a political party breaks up. Okay. When the political party breaks up and uh, the assembly will become in hung means there is no party which is having clear majority to form the government no party which is having clear majority to form the government in that case we call such uh, assembly as hung assembly okay then suppose simultaneous elections are conducted for all the states and assemblies all the states um, state assemblies and lok sabha but what may happen let us imagine that madhya pradesh okay because of uh, because of some reason uh, more uh, bjp uh, mlas went into what congress let us suppose in madhya pradesh and uh, now bjp and congress are the two bigger parties there so bjp uh, uh, into went to congress or you can say that from the bjp another unit came and three of them are not having majority to form the government then it is called as what hung assembly 
ओके देन गवर्नमेंट विल फॉल डाउन इन टू इयर्स ऑफ इलेक्शन इट मे हाउ पॉसिबल सो दी कोविंद रिकमेंडेशन कोविंद कमेटी रिकमेंडेशन वॉज वेन एवर हंग असेंबली काइंड ऑफ सिचुएशन कम्स वेन एवर देर इज नो पार्टी विच इज विच इज हैविंग मेजोरिटी सीट्स एंड कैनॉट फॉर द गवर्नमेंट इन दैट केस फ्रेस इलेक्शन शुड बी हेल्थ एंड शुड बी शुड बी हेल्थ ओनली फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ द टेन्यूर मीन्स इफ ए गवर्नमेंट फॉल्स आफ्टर टू ईयर्स दे शुड द न्यू गवर्नमेंट शुड रन ओनली फॉर थ्री ईयर्स बिकॉज अगेन लोकसभा इलेक्शन एंड स्टेट असेंबली इलेक्शन शुड बी पैरलि गोइंग ऑन नॉट ईयर्स सो वेन एवर एनी असेंबली फॉल्स डाउन आर डज नॉट एंजॉय द मेजोरिटी एंड वेन एवर देर इज अ डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ असेंबलीज हैपन इलेक्शन शुड बी कंडक्टेड दैट इज फेयर एंड फाइन बट इट हैज टू बी डन दैट दे हैव टू ओनली Uh, be in the government in the rest of the tenure. They cannot enjoy a new five years. Academy Award winners: Best Actor uh, Cillian Murphy, Best Actress Emma Stone, Best Director Christopher Nolan, Best International Feature Film The Zone of Interest. Uh, Tiger Triumph 2024. It is a bilateral means two nations are there. Tri service means army, navy, all of them will join. Join bilateral tri service humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. So how uh, the uh, india and us army navy will assist human beings in case of what disaster that is what is exercise is all about okay it will be conducted until march 31st the exercise aimed at developing interoperability for conducting hadr operations and refining standard of operating procedures so we will learn from them they will learn from us and what are the protocols we follow if they like it they will have it if we like of them we will have it okay both the armed forces of the countries will carry out this particular disaster relief nothing but this is africa and this is our uh, india is there here okay cyclone is coming here so how us uh, uh, will tackle this particular so cyclone and how india will ta tackle this particular cyclone if they would have been here what they would have done what india is doing for the same thing so nothing but drills are happening nothing but sops are being exchanged nothing but the way of tactical things has been what being what exchange this particular triumph 24 tiger 24 is done in two phases harbor phase and sea phase okay india's atmospheric research test bed is there in central india so this in this central india this particular here we are going to uh, have a center which is having what research test bed nothing but we are trying to do research with regard to atmospheric and cloud formation the first phase of india's atmospheric research test bed in, is located in central india and inaugurated in silkheda in seho district but these are all not important just remember this point the first phase of india's atmospheric research test bed is located in madhya pradesh this particular project was funded by ministry of earth sciences so here what we are doing 25 cutting at meteorological to know the cloud formation temperature pressure wind for that purpose okay cutting edge is nothing but latest technologies we are using for studying what critical cloud dy dynamics how the cloud formation etc temperature variations wind okay wind pressure etc how this cloud dynamics will actually are linked with monsoons over central indian monsoon core zone so we wanted to understand the mechanics of what monsoon here that is why we put lot of cutting edge and latest technologies over there okay which are related to meteorology it is open field focused observational and analytical research program which is going on at Sakal Kheda, Madhya Pradesh. The facility intends to conduct ground-based observations of weather, okay, such as parameters such as temperature, wind speeds, as well as pressure areas, depressions in the Bay of Bengal. When there is a depression, is there in the Bay of Bengal? What kind of temperature we'll see in Central India? So it's nothing but a complete research, and we are trying to be more refined with regard to our meteorological weather forecasting predictions. Codex. Elementarius Commission. What it is? India has been unanimously elected as a member. Representing Asian region, okay, in the executive executive uh, committee of Codex Elementarius Commission, okay, this particular Codex Elementarius Commission is uh, located in the headquarters of FAO that is in Rome. India has recently proposed setting up of group group standards for millets. For millet purpose, India has proposed that these should be standards. Okay, let us see that the Codex. Elementarius Commission. It is an international body jointly established by Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization in May 1963. Please remember that who formed this, founders of this commission. What does it do? It protect the consumer health and promote fair practices in food trade. Okay, means nothing but India is sending what millets and from UK we are getting what something else. Okay, from uh, we can say that Middle East we are getting what dates etc. So when the trade is happening. what are the standards uh, we have to follow with regard to what food products food trade only it is related to 
also known as food code. It's a collection of standards, guidelines, and code of practices related to food safety and quality. Exercise Lamaitie 2024. It is a tenth edition of joint military exercise. Remember this one: military exercise between India Army and Seychelles Defence Forces. It will be conducted. That is from today, 18th to 27th March. Lamaitie meaning friendship in uh, Creole language of what Seychelles? It's a biennial, means two years once it will happen, and it has been. We are doing this since 2021. 24 years happened. Next year, we will be celebrating 25th anniversary of exercise Lamaitie. Tele Manas, nothing but anybody who is having mental health problems, anybody suffering from stress, anybody suffering, suffering from not able to manage work life balance, anybody is uh, suffering from depression, loneliness, etc., they can call to this particular given number and they can get the assistance from the government. The National Tele Mental Health Program of India, the National Tele Mental Health Program of India, called as Tele Mental Health Assistance Networking across states, means Tele means on phone, they will, give your, they will give you mental health assistance. They will give you if you are feeling depressed, loneliness, etc. It is a, and we will create a network across all states. It was actually uh, was uh, uh, announced in the budget uh, 2022, February 1st. Okay. It's a integrated and inclusive 24 into 7 tele mental health facility, uh, which is uh, you can just call to 14416. So you will be connected to one of the uh, 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 executive on phone and he will ask you what happened madam what happened sir how are you feeling now no please do this etc so and so forth aims to uh, provide free tele mental health services all over the country round the clock particularly catering to the people in remote and un underserved areas nimhans this is one of the important uh, uh, institution which is uh, of the government is a nodal center and international institute of information technology okay uh, Bangalore providing technology support. So this is a nodal. Nimhans is a nodal, uh, uh, nodal body to implement this particular program, and all the technology, phone, etc., support will be given by IIITB, Indian Institute of Technology, Bangalore, and National Health uh, and Health uh, Health Systems Resource Center also provides what technical support. What is TH? The Army has established Signal. TH full form is what Signal Technology Evaluation Adaptation Group. Very very important the full form. Nothing but it recently announced a new technological unit dedicated to research. Basically, this particular stage group of the army will do research in assessing advanced communication technologies such as AI, 5G, 6G, machine learning, quantum technologies and more of defense purposes. Means all these technologies, how can we integrate these technologies to defend our country? It will focus on developing customized technologies across wired and wireless system for our country. Okay, nothing but how to... Uh, exchange information electronically, mobile communication, software defined radios, electronic warfare system, 5G, 6G network, etc. So and so forth. So basically, the new technologies, whatever we are having at this point of time, uh, like AI, okay, 5G, 6G, whatever it is there, the new technologies we wanted to uh, uh, develop in our country, we wanted to do research in our country to develop solutions, okay, so that our to make our defense more better. With regard to education, if you see Diksha scheme is there, it is a nationwide digital infrastructure for, for providing quality content. Content Just scan with the camera QR code and you can download the what, which whatever the subject, whatever the PDF, whatever the chapter you want, you can do that. So it is a one nation, one digital platform. Everyone will get the same PDF. So the uniformity with regard to the subject, uniformity with regard to quality, with regard to everything will be what? Uniformly given to the urban people, the rural people, everyone will get what? Same kind of education here. Now, under Swayam Prabha, Swayam Prabha is nothing but uh, it is a D2, a direct to home channel program. So, 12 DTH channels already in school education they are running and 22 uh, DTH channels are running in higher education. So, this channel uh, which has which we are floating for the school and uh, higher education, together they are included in a program called as Swayam Prabha. Okay, in budget 2023, Nirmana Madam has said that over 200 channels we are also providing. This is also called as PM e Vidya means electric electronically we are trying to give what education to the children's okay whether it is there is a school or in the college swayam is also there the, uh, the full form is important swayam study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds it is a national massive online open course platform with the provision of credit transfer to universities for higher education courses so you can just sitting in home you can apply into moc or swayam portal and you can choose a course that BSc you want to do, MSc you want to do, what you want to do, and you can just sit at home and study. It is an open online course. So the universities which are actually providing the service, the government will credit them with regard to the course. Okay. 
Till now, this particular portal is uh, delivering school courses from 9th to 12th class. Then one liners we are having very important. Google DeepMind revealed its latest AI gaming agent called Sema. This is very very important. Sema, you remember it. Okay. The full form of Sema is scalable, instructable, multi-world agent, which can follow natural language instruction. That is how I am speaking. No, it can follow it to perform tasks across video game environments also. Nothing but if I tell that uh, uh, Saima, go here. Saima, kill that. Okay, in the video game also the assistance will be given here. India and Brazil have recently had a meeting, 2 plus 2 meeting, defense and foreign minister, 2, our defense minister, our de foreign minister, their defense minister, their foreign minister, 2 plus 2 we say. Okay, so India and Brazil has uh, 2 plus 2 meetings with, and uh, we have uh, we have told that lot of cooperation with regard to both the countries are doing in energy, critical minerals, technology and counter terrorism. Defense, space, energy, vital minerals, technology, counterterrorism, all of them are being discussed. Two plus two, two, plus two dialogues India do with United States, Russia, Japan, Australia, United Kingdom, very, very important. Because they may ask you in the examination, and two plus two dialogues India has, with which one of the following countries India has two plus two dialogues? So, USA, Russia, Japan, Australia, United Kingdom. Kerala declared man and animal conflict as a state disaster. Okay, this is all about today's class. Thank you for watching. Keep uh, sharing and have a good day.